All right, so I'm going to go ahead and kick us off. Um, I want to welcome everybody tonight uh, for signing in to learn a little bit more about what the city of Upper Arlington has planned uh, in terms of rolling out body worn cameras among our police officers. Uh, what I'd like, to, what our real objective is tonight is to educate you uh, in the community a little bit about what are the issues that we are working on as we go through this process, let you know what our timeline is in the process. And then through this, really hear from you, what are the issues that you wanna make sure that we come back to you with? And we'll be back to the community again before we finalize our plans to kind of let you know the sum of our research as we go forward. So um, I wanted to just take, <clears throat> excuse me, take a minute to welcome everybody. I'm actually kind of double booked tonight, but I'm gonna leave you in really good hands tonight. Uh, the discussion is gonna be led by our police chief, Steve Farmer. Um, he's going to be assisted by a couple members of his team, as well as a couple folks from my office. So um, without further ado, so we can get going again, I just simply want to say thanks to everybody uh, who's logged in and is paying attention to this. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to the chief. Well, thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. And thank you for everyone who's uh, logged in tonight or who may be viewing this at a later date. I know this is an important thing for the community. Uh, something that's been a long time coming, and we just wanted to take some time tonight to kind of uh, take a little bit of the mystery out of this, because uh, I'm sure the word's been spread that these are coming. Uh, it's been, the body cameras have, have, have been all around us, and it's, it's our time. So we're excited, and we just wanted to share some information with you. Um, I also, you know, want to thank uh, everybody who's been a part of the project. Uh, for being in this, but tonight we're going to cover some of the background of this, why we're doing it, some of the goals and expectations that we have. Uh, we want to hear from the community. As Steve mentioned, uh, we're going to tonight, we're going to take, uh, invite you to share any questions, concerns you have via the chat function. If we have time at the end, this is meant to be a very brief introductory meeting tonight, but if we have time, we'll try to get to a couple questions but we will continue to gather questions and we'll remind you of that, how to do that as we move along. But we wanna get some, some questions and concerns from you through the chat function and through email. So we wanna um, talk about our timeline for implementation so you know when these are coming and we're gonna keep you up to date as this process goes on. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a second meeting coming up as well. And I have some slides. I'm gonna attempt here to share my screen. We good? All right. So I just want to share some of these with you. I will go to the slideshow. So body-worn cameras, uh, talking about this as we move ahead. As you know, the state of Ohio um, has been trying to incentivize and encourage communities all across the state to start investing in this technology. Um, we uh, have had cruiser cameras for many years. And what we want people to do is understand that body-worn cameras are an extension of a program that we've been doing for quite some time. Uh, the cruiser cameras, uh, we, we've had policy and we've worked through uh, the growing pains of that many years ago. And this is gonna be extension of that. And so it's all gonna be wrapped up into kind of one package moving forward. Now, body cameras, if you're not familiar, it's, it's as simple as that. It's a camera that's connected to the chest, possibly the shoulder eyeglasses by design, depending on the vendor that we use. Um, and it provides both audio and video. And if, if you watch the news, you see a lot of the body-worn cameras out there. And sometimes you see it with or without audio. But these are the things we're working on as we move forward. Now, some of, the, some of the products that we look at, the dash cameras, the cruiser cameras that we have and body-worn cameras, they work in sync together. So it's pretty much one unit working together to capture uh, interactions with the public. And um, it gives us kind of a, a, a different perspective on what police officers are doing. Um, for many times we can see the cruiser video, but sometimes officers aren't on there, but now you get a different perspective and we're excited for people to understand a little bit more of our experiences out there as well.
Now, some of the expected benefits, uh, you know, why are we doing this? You know, obviously the original reason for body cameras was to capture evidence. And that's for different types of cases, um, you know, whether it's just a simple interaction or something that becomes more serious. So we wanna get evidence for, to do criminal prosecutions. Now, also, as we found out through the use of body cameras across the country, that it is a great way to promote accountability and transparency for an agency. And uh, as we know, that's some of the things that the state of Ohio really wants. And that's why they're promoting this particular technology. And we're all in. We, we have always uh, been transparent. We want to promote transparency in our organization. And we have a, a serious focus on accountability. So if this can help promote these, these values that we hold, then we're excited about that. We want to. We want always want to enhance community police relations. Um, you know, we want people to feel comfortable coming to us. We want to be able to know that they know we're going to be accountable, and we can build these relationships. Now, on the on the PowerPoint, it says support good citizen and officer officer conduct. You know, one thing is, you know, people do sometimes you know act a little different when they're on camera, and that's okay. But the thing is, we want to make sure we're doing the right thing, the community's doing the right thing, and we capture it. And if this helps promote these interactions, that's wonderful. And sometimes people do make complaints on, on police officers. Sometimes they're valid and sometimes they're, they're not. But this gives us an opportunity to look at the video, listen to the audio, and hopefully have quicker resolutions. Because many times, you know, and, and we still are going to take our time if there's a complaint, and we're going to do our due diligence to make sure we uncover every piece. This is not the only piece of evidence that we'll be using, but it does give us a good perspective, and we can use it for that purpose. You know, we're going to monitor officers for training and review purposes, because being a Kalita accredited agency, we're required to review a certain amount of videos every month. So we will do this. So just like we review cruiser camera now, we'll review body worn cameras. And if we learn, if we look at something and we say, hey, we can do this better, our trainers are gonna use that video, incorporate that into our training, and we will continue, continue to get better. And that's our goal moving here. And we think this particular technology is gonna help us along the way. Now, some of the challenges that, that we're dealing with, obviously financial considerations. Now, the people of Upper Arlington um, are supportive of purchasing this technology, and that's, and, that's, and that's great. And we do have a budget for it, but it's not cheap. It's, it's, it's an expensive endeavor. Um, but, you know, this is going to be possibly an ongoing cost, but it's affordable, and it is one of the best insurance policies the, the city can really invest in. Um, but that's why we're so serious about our research and making sure we get the best product we can and we have the best policies we can. It does require a little extra personnel, but we've hired one person to, we have other, other uh, technology issues that we need to deal with on our records management side, but this person is going to be in charge of uh, this program, the hardware, software, for the uh, public records, the video management, the redaction and things like that. So we have a person on staff now who's being trained and we're excited to have him on board and uh, getting him up to speed to make sure he's ready to hit the ground running when we get everything in place. Now, when we talk about privacy concerns for the community and for the officers, this has been one of the hot topics for body cameras in the last several years. Um, what once was a way to make sure police officers are doing things right. Well, the one of the maybe originally unintended consequences where, you know, we're, we're sometimes capturing video that people in the community may not want us to capture. And that's understandable. We get that. But we have to make sure we accurately capture video that's needed uh, to make the community stronger. So we understand these privacy concerns. And as we solicit some of your feedback tonight, I would imagine some of those concerns may be along these lines. And we're expecting to hear from you and, and we can address that further later as we develop our policy because there are ways that we can, that we can address that through our policies, but still be true to the program and make sure we're capturing what we need. 
So, you know, we need to talk about those things and we look into those things. What are the rights? What are the obligations that we have? Because some, some situations are very complex. And uh, sometimes people with medical issues, mental health issues, uh, whether it's a religious issue, these things may or may not be captured. And we're gonna make sure we're true to the Ohio Public Records Law. And we redact what we have to, not film what we don't have to, but always uh, be in line with uh, what the expectations are for ourselves and for the community. Now the policy considerations, I hit on that a little bit. Now the guidelines, when to record, you know, um, that's the big one. When will we record? We're working on that policy right now. We feel pretty comfortable with where we're going with it. But once again, we understand there may be concerns out there and we wanna hear what folks' concerns are. But uh, we wanna make sure through all this, we wanna make sure you understand what the spirit is. There have been some police uh, interactions with public across the country where some things were not captured and people felt they should. And we wanna make sure we learn from some of these experiences that other people have had. So behind all this, the spirit is capture what we need to capture, but don't capture anything that's unnecessary. Now that's, that's a tricky ground and we are going to be trained to deal with this. And we're gonna have policy that supports this. But if you remember that, as we talk about these things, we're looking to capture the things that by and large, that is why this technology was created. Now about notifying people who they're recorded, you know, that'll be in our policy. The times, if we can, we will. They're, that's not always practical, but we're gonna work that into the policy. And, and things like, when do we stop? If somebody asks us, hey, would you stop recording? Yeah, we're gonna address that in our policy and it won't be as clear cut because that's going to be a situational decision, but it's gonna be written on when you can, when an officer has an option, that's gonna be in our policy that we're gonna share with you uh, at a later time once we get it finalized. What are our obligations? Um, what are some penalties if, if people aren't following that? And we're gonna have discussions with our staff, uh, with our bargaining unit to make sure we understand um, what the expectations are about following the guidelines and what ramifications there would be. These are all things we're working on, including, you know, like I said, the policy is gonna be available once we get it finished, but we have it, we have it, we're pretty far along, but there are some finishing touches that we have to do once we choose a vendor for the, for the hardware. Uh, but always keep in mind, like all of our policies, they're fluid. Uh, these are living policies that we have, that evolve over time based on legal, circ legal circumstances, um, based on the input, based on our own experiences, lessons learned as we develop the technology. So we're, we're, not, gonna, we're not gonna let this policy be stale. We're gonna keep it alive. Now, body maintenance and use. Um, the, the data maintenance and use. The policy, you know, we wanna make sure, you know, that we always stay true to public records law. Not everything has to be retained, but some things may not be considered a public record and we're gonna make sure we do that. That's why we hired a staff person. That's why we, we want an in-house expert to be able to give us some guidance as we move through this, as well as our city attorney's office. Everybody has a piece of this policy. We're doing this as a team citywide, although it's primarily on our shoulders as it should be, we wanna make sure we get the best input from all the experts we have available to us in-house. Um, when it comes to uh, data security standards, our IT team, along with, uh, once again, you know, the rest of the police staff, we're gonna make sure we keep this safe. We only release what we, what we, what we have to or think what we should under certain circumstances. And once again, I said, that, that's, circuit, that's situational and we're gonna have to be flexible when it comes to that. People may want to know, and we may get questions about this as well. Now, what, what does the public have access to? Where certain videos are going to be automatically available, you know, for through uh, public records law. And we need to, once again, I say that a lot, but it's very important that we stick to those guidelines. But there may be times where we somebody may want to see a video ahead of time. And we're not opposed to that, depending on the situation. If there's a situation where we can bring clarity to the public and it's not part of a criminal investigation. It's nothing that we have any reason to keep, uh, to keep away from folks. 
and if it's if staffing allows and we can create some understanding and take away some of the mystery on something that happens, uh, then absolutely. We'll try our best to use this video to try to allay any concerns that the public has when we're able to. Um, some things we're not gonna be able to because it may be part of a case investigation, just like it has been for cruiser cameras. And, and I think the public's very aware of, of this because we've been dealing with some of these situations for quite a long time now. And um, you know, for legal proceedings, obviously when it comes to that, it's the same as any other kind of record. You know, if attorneys need them, they, we go through the same process that we do with any other police record. Training, oh, training. That's been a calling for police for, for the past year, as we know. Um, I'm just gonna put it out there. We understand that. The one thing we're, we're happy about is we provide more training hours for our department than, than most agencies are able to. It's, a, it's always been a focus at Upper Arlington Police. And our trainers uh, are, are the highest quality and they are also excited about using this to get lessons learned. And we use, we use cruiser videos now to enhance our training and we will continue to use this particular video to do the same. By looking at the, we will learn from this, we will do our in-house training, but once again, what we view in this training will drive our policies, it's gonna drive our procedures um, and it's gonna make us stronger. So um, we'll go to the next slide. Let's try to keep you informed on our timeline. Like I said, tonight's just an introductory. It's kind of an overview of where we're going because we want, always want the public to know what we're working on. Um, the public's always been very supportive of us here in Upper Arlington and we want to kind of return that and, and recognize that by keeping everybody uh, up to date and involved in what we're working on. So our timeline, the winter of 2021, our goal was to hire a record specialist to be the project coordinator and we've been able to accomplish that. Now that we're in the spring, we want to select a vendor and a little bit of background on that. We have met with several vendors. We've had demonstration, them come in house, do demonstrations. We've gone to other agencies and looked at their equipment, looked at their videos, um, looked at their policies. So we know uh, basically by looking at what has worked well with other agencies that are similar in size, uh, both city and department, what's worked well with them, we know what is most likely to work best with us. So we have a really good handle on what is available out there. So we're ready to select a vendor uh, in, in the coming weeks, perhaps. So we also, in 2021, we're gonna make sure we're ready for the storage and public records infrastructure. One of the fears coming into body-worn cameras was the public records function to be uh, just put it right out there, be transparent with you. Um, to do a public records, uh, to fulfill a public records request on body camera can be pretty labor intensive. So we wanted to make sure we had the staffing in place to make sure we can do this efficiently uh, and keep true to uh, you know our core values of trying to provide the best service to the public. So we have someone in place to do that. And by summer, we hope to have a limited test and we're gonna put a kind of a beta testing with some cameras out in the field and test our public records function, test the hardware, test our policy. And based on what we learn out of that test, you know, place our order, have full implementation, implementation for the body worn cameras in the fall of 2021. Now at any time we could be ahead of schedule uh, and that would be great, but we want to be realistic in putting it out there for everyone. The cruiser cameras are going to be installed a little bit over time. It takes a little more time to do that, but the body cameras we can put out once we finish our test, we can put them out there right away. And we plan on having them on every officer in patrol. And basically if somebody has a uniform, you know, we want them to wear a camera, but we're working on the details of how they're going to be distributed, but we should have plenty of cameras to cover all the needs in our camera and in, in our system based on, on what we've seen so far. And we talked about you know, what we've accomplished, uh, kind of already said that. We, we initially put together an internal research team, which consisted primarily of our training cadre, and they have done an excellent job at getting all the information, bringing in the, the companies to show us their products and demonstrate them and show us what they're able to provide. 
Um, we looked at the cost of the first year and in some of the cases, some of the vendors uh, in the cost in the, in the future. We've met with other departments, as I said, we learned the lesson. Now we're gonna learn from their lessons that they learned. We met with three leading vendors so far. We met with internal stakeholders on purchasing process and infrastructure of what we need to do internally as the city to make this a success. We created a draft policy that once again, we're still, we're still putting that together based on our vendor, we're gonna add to that. And we did the record specialist position. Now, as we move ahead this April, as you see now, we're, we're welcoming your input. Uh, whether you have a question, comment, concern that we can look at and we wanna make sure that, that we address those as best we can. And so we're doing that tonight got the record specialist. We're gonna get our, our vendors selected in May. Uh, IT's working on to make sure we have everything ready for our infrastructure and data storage and finalize our policies. We hope to have all this by May. And that way, once we select the vendor, we have all this in place, we can come give you a lot more details on what this is gonna look like in June at another community meeting. And prior to that, I'm sure we'll probably go ahead and just share some of the policy and other, uh, and other outlets. So you can look at that to see what questions you may have. And we're gonna have all of our trainers, uh, all of our officers trained. Uh, most of the vendors, they provide the initial training and our trainers get the kind of a, what it would be a train the trainer type function so they can continue to train us on an ongoing basis. We'll be testing all that stuff in June. And like we said, in fall, we hope to have everything in place and ready to go. Now, if you do have any questions, you could have used the chat function tonight, but, and we'll try to see if there's a couple that we can address. I don't know. I'll check with my, with my team here in a minute. But if you do have any you wanna send in, that'd be great. As you see here on the slide, you can contest it at city.police at UAOH dot net and for those of you who may be having video pop problems i'll just put it out there again and that's city dot police at uaoh dot net because if you live in an area with the internet like mine it may be a little sketchy so uh i want to make sure i'm sensitive to the people that may have the same problems i do so i will get back on here so you can see and i will look and we don't have any questions to answer right away tonight which is fine but take time, think about it. If you have friends that have an interest in this, this is recorded tonight. So you can go back to the website, visit this. Uh, you can have them view this and that's great. Um, so- Steve, I think a question did just come through um, on the chat screen. Oh, I saw that. I saw Floyd said- Before Floyd's comment, there was one from uh, someone oh. named Judy as well. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, I gather the question was, will they have audio as well as visual? Well, the truth, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be audio and video. And I kind of alluded, but I didn't wanna get into the weeds too much earlier, but I talked about how, and some of the things we've seen in, out there that, um, We've looked back and go, wow, I wish something would have been on camera. And one, that's why I said that's the spirit behind this as we move forward. We want to make sure we capture what we need. And some of the videos that we've seen out there, so, you know, they were only catching video without audio. Well, one of our goals is to make sure we capture both all the time. That, you know, it was very common in the early days of body cameras to that the first 30 seconds or so could be varying times would just be video without audio. We really don't see the uh, as much value in that. So yeah, we're gonna work on making sure everything has both. And I see what is the budget. I can say uh, we budgeted $285,000. Um, that's the first year, but also that's, that's, depending on who we go to, that may be all we need for quite some time. Like that's gonna carry us over a few years. So. That's, that's a big number, but it's more, it's gonna carry us more than one year. Got one more? All right, great. Well, thank you for those questions. I appreciate it and thanks for the comments as well. Um, 
we really appreciate the interest. I know this probably isn't the biggest thing on a lot of people's lists, but I know there are some people that are very concerned. And uh, so we wanna make sure we're out there for you, trying to keep you up to date as best we can. Um, and I know it may seem like there wasn't a lot tonight, but just know that uh, we're, we're putting a lot into it and we'll have more come June. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, like I said, send in the questions, send in the concerns, and we'll get to them uh, next time. That's all I have. Thank you. Have a good night, folks.